Hey guys, welcome back to The Music Hole. My name is Cole, and I'm really excited for today's album, um, Quiet is the New Loud by the Kings of Convenience, which came out in 2001. So my brother and I listened to these guys so much in the 2000s in high school and college. So this is kind of like a personal favorite. Um, so I just hope you guys like it. It's a Norwegian duo. Um, doing a kind of Simon and Garfunkel thing. You know, it's like in indie folk slash singer-songwriter. It's very chill. It's very late night. It's very introspective. Um, some great harmonies. It's just a really lovely sound and album. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to talk about it. I've got some clips lined up as usual. Um, so let's dive right in. So track one, again, just a really lovely sound, a great beginning. Um, but track one is called Winning a Battle and Losing the War, which I'll be honest, it, that confuses me a little bit when it comes to the lyrics. Because I, I see these lyrics um, not as like a relationship, you know, a, a man and a woman together and having like a fight. Um, but I see it as here's a guy who's friends with a girl, and the girl, it sounds like, is having boy problems, you know. Uh, maybe she had a fight with her boyfriend or something, you know, something happened. And the guy, trying to be a good friend, is uh, trying to make her smile again, as he says, you know. I mean, the first line he says is, you know, even though I'll never need her, which, you know, that, that line in particular is why uh, I interpret this as they're just friends. You know, he'll never need her. He's not in love with this girl. But he is friends with her, and he is trying to be a good friend and make her feel better. Um, but making her feel better kind of like puts a, it kind of ruins his day a little bit, as he says. You know, it's only giving him pain, is what he says. So, like, you know, he, he, he wants to help his friend, but at the same time, helping his friend is kind of a pain in the butt, <laughs> basically. Um, but anyway, just a really lovely song, a great beginning. Um, that's all I have to say about it. Uh, track two is called Toxic Girl, and it's definitely, for me, one of the big highlights from the album. It's really memorable. So let's check it out. In the sky, the birds are Again, just a really cool song sonically. And I can I can relate to these lyrics, I mean, in my own life, because it sounds like what he's talking about is this girl who you know, it sounds like he's in he's in love with this girl, or at the very least, he's attracted to this girl. And as he says, this girl gets drunk all the time. She's kind of like sleazy. She kind of sleeps around, kissing this guy, kissing that guy. 
but never the main guy because he says never you. <laughs> so, you know, like maybe in the in the friend group, like she's been sleeping with all of his friends, but not him. So, you know, I actually went through a, a similar situation in college where like I had a crush on a girl and she kind of slept with all my friends apparently. <laughs> so, you know, not that like I, I don't I don't care about that. I'm just saying it was the thing that happened. Um, so I can relate. Um, but anyway, yeah, so this guy, this poor guy, um, he needs to just realize that she's not into him. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, but again, just a really cool song. Um, probably my favorite song on the album. Um, but anyway, that's all I have to say about it. So let's move on to track number three called Singing Softly to Me. Again, just another really lovely song, and um, I'm assuming it's the main character, but he's, he's, he's done what everyone else has done in their lives at one, at one point or another. He's, he's thinking about the Joneses, as they say, uh, just in the sense that like the Joneses seem to have a much better life. Uh, you know, maybe they have a lot of money, or maybe they have a nice house, or a lot of friends, or whatever it is, you know. Uh, from this guy's perspective, you know, he says, uh, things seem so much better when they're not part of your close surroundings. So, you know, it, it, it may appear that the Joneses uh, are living the high life and are having fun, but if you were to step into their shoes, you know, it might be possible that they Maybe they're depressed or really anxious or they have some sort of mental problems or any number of things, you know, that could be wrong with them. So like on the surface, they look fine. And from a distance, our main character is jealous. But perhaps if you look closely at these people, their lives aren't as great as he thinks they are. Um, so I like this line or th these lyrics. It's a cool song. It's a cool message. Very, very relatable. Um, but that's all I have to say about it. So we're going to skip to track four uh, next, which is called I Don't Know What I Can Save You From. Another really cool song. So let's check it out. After midnight must have been three years since we last spoke I slowly tried to bring back the image of your face From the memory so old and I tried so hard to follow But I didn't catch a half of what had gone Said I don't know what I can save you from Yeah, I like this song a lot. Um, I consider it to be a companion piece to um, the first song in the sense that like I imagine it's the same girl that she or that this guy used to be friends with who had all these problems and he tried to listen to her and make her feel better. But it sounds like, you know, a few years have gone by. He's kind of like had it up to here with this girl. Uh, he, he had it up to here with this girl three years ago and, you know, ended the friendship. 
But I guess maybe this girl is really struggling currently. Maybe she's, you know, up at night, a little drunk, doing some drunk dialing. And it sounds like she, she drunk dialed uh, the, the guy from track one. And, you know, the guy is trying to be nice about it. He's not, like, immediately dismissing her. But, you know, at, basically at the end of the day, as he says, you know, I don't know what I can save you from. Just, just in the sense that, like, you know, he, he, not only does he not know what to say, but he kind of just doesn't want to deal with it anymore. You know what I mean? Um, he's probably a little bit too nice in the sense that, like, he doesn't want to just hang up on this person. You know, he's trying to be a little bit empathetic. He's trying to have some sympathy a little bit. But really, he just, it's, it's probably late at night, and he just doesn't want to deal with this person. <laughs> You know, he already decided years ago not to be friends with her, and now he's put on the spot, and he's just not happy about it. Uh, but anyway, that's all I have to say about the song. It's another cool song. Uh, but the next song, Failure, is another favorite of mine, probably my second favorite song. So let's check it out. way to learn retracing your steps till you know have no fear your wounds will heal I just love this song so much. It's just so catchy. And, you know, this guy is apparently just like, uh, he, he's got it all together because <laughs> he's, you know, he's like, oh, failure is something that we all learn from, you know, and don't worry, my, my wounds will heal. So, like, I might feel bad right now, but time will erase all wounds, as they say. So this guy is like in a really good headspace, like, you know, uh, maybe maybe he meditates or something. I don't know, <laughs> but he's he's got a he's got life kind of figured out a little bit. So it's just a nice little song, um, nice little lyrics, important lyrics for everyone's life, uh, for everyone's lives. You know, try to learn from your mistakes. Uh, it might suck that X happened and Y happened, but things happen and. All you can do is learn from them and move on. So anyway, that's all I have to say about failure. So let's move on to the weight of my words. There are very many ways I would like to break the spell You've cast upon me Cause all the time Sacrificed myself to make you want me has made you haunt me. So I always thought this song was kind of strange in the sense that like on failure, it sounds like there, here's a guy who's got his uh, mental game in order, but then immediately the weight of my words is about a guy, maybe, I mean, it could be a different guy maybe, but let's assume it's the same guy. So the same guy is now like haunted uh, by this girl that as he says, he, he wants, He's in love with this girl, and he wants her to like him, but she doesn't like him. And so, like, 
on one hand, this guy says like, oh, I'll learn from my mistakes and my failures and my wounds will heal. But then immediately after, he's, <laughs> he's not able to deal with the fact that like, okay, he's in love with a girl who doesn't like him in that way. So like, is, he has this weird uh, dilemma going on where like, on one hand, he understands failure, but on the other hand, uh, he can't figure out this really simple-ish problem. Um, so it's just kind of interesting. Um, I'm assuming they're linked in that way. I could be wrong. But anyway, that's all I have to say about it. So with that said, let's move right along. I sat down, said I don't want to suffer. But she told me she had nothing to offer no more. So that's the girl from back then, um, and I believe it's the same character. You know, I, I, again, it's a very lovely sound, but uh, here we have the same character who I guess is finally confronting this girl that he likes a lot, and he's just like telling her all of his feelings, I guess, that may, maybe even saying that she lo or that he loves her. Um, and, you know, as he says, she has nothing to offer, um, you know, this poor guy. But as he says, you know, now that I know that, I, I didn't know before, um, is, is basically what he says. So, like, he just kind of always had this hope that, like, oh, maybe she likes me. You know, he's never confronted her about it. But, but now he finally has, and he's finally confessed his feelings for this girl, and the girl is like, well, I, I don't like you that way, <laughs> you know. Uh, so this guy, maybe, maybe he feels slightly relieved, I would imagine, because up until this point, uh, you know, that, that, that idea has been in limbo. And by that I mean, you know, he, he didn't know if he liked, or he didn't know if she liked him. He didn't know if she didn't like him. And maybe on some level, he enjoyed that ambiguity a little bit. But now that he knows, um, you know, I hope he feels better. I hope he's able to move on. Um, but it's just, you know, it's a, it's a key part in his life story. He's confronted the girl of his dreams and got rejected, as we all do now and then. Um, so this poor guy. But anyway, that's all I have to say about it. So let's move right along. So that's leaning against the wall, and I imagine that um, it's a continuation of, of the last song where he's probably confronted this girl who might be the same girl from that earlier track. Remember, there's a girl he liked who was like sleeping around with all of, all of his friends, it sounded like. So he's finally confronted this girl about it, about the fact that he likes her. And, you know, she doesn't like him in that way. And as he says in the song, you know, he's on the floor not listening anymore. So I imagine this girl uh, is standing there trying to, conf uh, trying to comfort this guy, trying to say like, oh, I mean, you know, I, I, uh, I don't, it's not that I don't like you because you're like a bad person or you're ugly. 
you know, it's just, I have, you know, it doesn't really matter what the reason is. She's just trying to comfort this guy that like, you know, she feels bad that he feels bad, but at the same time, you know, uh, it just is what it is. So this guy is really frustrated. He's leaning against the wall. Uh, he's not listening to her trying to comfort him. He's just kind of done with it. He's just really sad. Uh, so this poor guy. Um, but that's all I have to say about it. So with that said, let's move on to the next song. What's the material substance that envelops to That one perceives as hunger and the other as food I wake in tangled covers to a sash of snow Dream in a cartoon garden I could never know. So this is the last song I want to talk about. It's called Parallel Lines. And it's basically encapsulating the entire issue with this guy and his life. Um, you know, because the guy and the girl are parallel lines, as he says, right? Um, and he's just thinking about it, and he's like, why, why are some people just so in love with someone who will never love them back? Like, why, why is that a thing? It's basically, <laughs> he, you know, he's thinking about these things. He's, he's doing a little philosophical pondering, like, how can I be so in love with this girl who, who wants nothing to do with me in that way? You know, they're, they're parallel lines. Um, so I, I just really liked it. You know, it's, it's a very relatable issue. You know, I'm sure many of you guys and gals have gone through it. I certainly have. But that's really all I have to say about Quiet is the New Loud. I mean, again, really laid back, chill, indie folk, indie singer-songwriter vibe. Um, although, actually, I do have to say one thing. If you notice on the cover, uh, you've got three people. You've got this guy staring at us. And then you've got a woman and this guy comforting the woman. So I imagine this, this album is about these two people. Uh, and perhaps this guy is like looking at him in the sense that like he's, he's trying to understand like this weird dilemma <laughs> that this guy has. Uh, I, could, I could be wrong about that last part, but I think about it. But anyway, um, I just hope you guys enjoyed the album or my interpretations. You know, again, kings of convenience, check them out. Um, and feel free, as always, to comment with your thoughts and opinions, you know. Um, and if you like the video, please like and subscribe. It would really help out. I enjoy making these, and I will continue to make them uh, for as long as I have interesting albums to talk about, basically. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, check them out, and have a good night.